can you imagine having any political discussion in india without mentioning the office of the prime minister and how often do you see your family members talk about the president rarely right the politics of india and the discussions regarding it are generally centered around the prime minister and his council of ministers why do you think that is you already know the answer it's because in india we have a parliamentary form of government where the union executive has a real head and a nominal head the president is the nominal or the ceremonial head while the real head is the prime minister and his council of ministers and they have the real power of running the government all the good things and bad things that happen in the country are generally associated with the prime minister and his council now let us talk about how the prime minister is appointed so the constitution says that the prime minister shall be appointed by the president and the other minister shall be appointed by the president on the advice of the prime minister now can you answer this question who appoints the prime minister in india is it the president the vice president the chief justice of india or the home minister yes it is the president who formally appoints the prime minister of the country in reality the citizens who are above 18 years of age participate in the general elections of the country through this general election members of the lok sabha are elected and the party or the coalition which commands majority in the lok sabha election elects their leader as the prime minister of the country now what is a coalition government so when one party does not get a clear majority in the lok sabha election two or more parties come together and join hands to form the government such a government is known as the coalition government in the 1996 general elections bjp got the maximum votes but they did not get a clear majority that is they could not get 50% of the total seats of the lok sabha the lok sabha has 543 members so to get a clear majority one has to get 272 votes but bjp did not get that majority they emerged as the single largest party after the vote but did not get the majority so as per the convention the then president shankar dayal sharma called upon bjp to form the government and atal bihari vajpayee was sworn in as the prime minister after this when they had to prove their majority in the lok sabha they failed to get the support of the members of the lok sabha and so atal bihari vajpayee had to resign after 13 days of staying in office so as you can see when no one party gets a majority in the lok sabha elections the president has the power to appoint any person as the prime minister who he feels will be able to form a stable government at the center in a parliamentary form of government the real head of the government is the prime minister and all the real powers are executed by the prime minister along with his council of ministers so the president does not really have a choice but acts in accordance to the advice of the prime minister and his council of ministers these council of ministers are appointed by the president on advice of the prime minister the constitution doesn't clearly mention how many number of ministers there can be but the total number of ministers in the council of ministers shall not exceed 15% of the total members of the lok sabha so this is what the constitution says regarding the council of ministers the prime minister selects his council of ministers from his trusted party members and allies from people who he thinks can work as a team and carry out the duties and responsibilities that they will have to execute these ministers should ideally be from different regions of the country so that they can represent the voice of the entire nation 
remember we had said that in india there is no separation of power which means that a member of the legislature can simultaneously be a member of the executive so all of these ministers who are part of the executive have to be a part of the legislature that is all of the ministers must be either a member of the lok sabha or a member of the rajya sabha the president has the power to appoint any minister even if he is not a part of either house but he has to get himself elected to the lok sabha or the rajya sabha within 6 months of being elected as a minister similarly the prime minister also has to be a member of either house of parliament but again the president can appoint someone as the prime minister who is not a part of the parliament but the prime minister has to get a seat in the parliament within 6 months otherwise he will have to vacate his seat this had happened to the former prime minister narasimha rao after the death of rajiv gandhi the congress won the 1991 general elections and they chose narasimha rao to be the prime minister of the country but narasimha rao wasn't a member of either house of parliament so he was a non mp he did not belong to the lok sabha or the rajya sabha thus by elections were held in the lok sabha constituency of nandyal and narasimha rao was elected as the member of lok sabha so he could continue as the prime minister of the country so what is a by election a by election is an election which is held separately from the main election and its purpose is to elect a new member to the parliament now we'll be talking about the council of ministers but before that let us take the example of your school so your school has the academic department the co curricular department the financial department and many other departments also under the departments there are various sub departments or sub groups so like under the academic department there is the science department the commerce department or the humanities department similarly under the co curricular department there is the games department the art and painting department or the singing and dancing department just like that there are various divisions and sub divisions within the departments of your school other than these bodies there might be certain external bodies which work on the outline and are not much visible but they help in the working of these various departments the principal who is the head of the administration because of his position becomes the head of the major divisions or departments so as we can see a school is not a single body but a composite one where different departments and bodies come together to form the total school which works efficiently in a similar manner there are various departments and sub departments in the working of ministers because the ministers have to decide policies and also implement them at the central and state levels there are various departments and thus various types of ministers in order of their rank we have three types of ministers the highest ranking ministers are the cabinet ministers below them we have the ministers of state and finally the deputy ministers so the three categories of ministers are cabinet ministers ministers of state and deputy ministers so the first category of ministers are the cabinet ministers these ministers are the closest body to the prime minister they consist of the senior most ministers the cabinet ministers head the important ministries of the central government and they are the chief policy makers who take decisions regarding the transaction of government business so the cabinet are the closest body to the prime minister who decide the policies of the government together the cabinet ministers are the heads of their various departments and the important ministers under the cabinet ministers are the defense minister home minister railway minister finance ministers and the other such ministers 
the cabinet ministers attend the cabinet meetings that is the meetings of the cabinet ministers together where they discuss the policies of the government let us take the example of defense so india is a huge country it has a land border of 15106 km and a coastline of 7516 km this border has been shared by india with pakistan afghanistan china nepal bhutan bangladesh and myanmar as you can understand it is a huge country which is why its defense budget is in crores so do you think it is possible for one minister who is the defense minister to take care of all the matters that fall under the defense of the country no right that is why there are several other ministers who help the cabinet ministers and assist them to run the government of the country more efficiently that brings us to ministers of state there are two types of ministers of state ones who have independent charge and the ones without independent charge so the ministers of state can either be attached to the cabinet ministers these are the ministers of state who do not have independent charge so they work under the cabinet ministers and assist the cabinet ministers in their working they help in the implementation of the policies of the government in the center and the states other than this there can be independent charge given to the ministers of state so the ministers of state can be either attached to the cabinet ministers as in this case or they can be given independent charge of departments or ministries in either of these cases the ministers of state work under the supervision and control of the cabinet ministers the ministers of state generally do not attend the cabinet meetings but they can be invited to attend cabinet meetings when discussions are taking place which concern their own departments the third category of ministers is deputy ministers these ministers are not given independent charge so deputy ministers are not given independent charge of a department or ministry but they are responsible for assisting the cabinet ministers and the ministers of state in their administrative parliamentary and political duties so the deputy ministers do not attend the cabinet meetings at all so the deputy ministers help the cabinet ministers and ministers of state in the efficient functioning of the government the deputy ministers do not have individual posts or portfolios and are thus working under the cabinet ministers or the ministers of state so in this video we've talked about how the prime minister and his council of ministers are appointed we've also talked about the composition of the council of ministers they consist of the cabinet ministers the ministers of state and the deputy ministers and the constitution specifies that the council of ministers cannot exceed 15% of the total strength of the lok sabha so the prime minister and the council of ministers together form the real head of the government and carry out the major functions of the executive of the country don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now